Hi everyone. Hello. This is Sari Solden this and Gina Carey. We're from ADDJourneys.com, our membership online community for adults with ADD. And this is our broadcast that we do regularly calling Finding Yourself with ADD. So finding yourself in this world with ADD as well as find, trying to find who you really are with your ADD. And we sometimes take questions and we chat about the subject. Today this is going to be a recording that we're pre-recording for a later release. So we're not going to be chatting, but we're going to be commenting mostly on a lot of the discussion that's been going on on our site from uh, the, using the wonderful wisdom of our other members who help each other so much every day on the site. Yes, and um, before we start, you know, one of the things that always comes to my mind as a mother is that summer has a completely different feel to it. We all recognize that. Um, but with the my children being home and all that energy in the house and everybody's moving and talking and running around at the same time, you know, there are there are ways to think about this. You could overstructure and have every minute of every day planned like you do during the school year, or you could take a deep breath and relax a little bit and know that it's okay to let things go a little bit. Um, if they, you know, want to run around or watch television, make sure you're being kind to yourself is one of the things that, that I need to remember too um, for my own sanity. So in the summer, you know you can count on several things. It, it, the heat, for one. And so make sure you're prepared for that. Make sure you're staying hydrated. I carry this around all the time, thanks to my sister. Got me this great water bottle. I've dropped it. It's even fallen out of a moving car, I think, and doesn't break. But make sure you've, you've got, you're hydrating yourself so you don't get overly exhausted. You know you can count on construction. There's construction everywhere during the summer. so plan for that when you're going to go on trips or you're going to take the kids to the park or whatever it might be you're always going to have some kind of delay due to construction and and know that before you hit the road and then i think the third thing is you know what this is a time for your kids and for you to have a little bit of fun so the dishes aren't going anywhere the chores aren't going anywhere the bills aren't going anywhere they'll be there but the kids are going to wake up and play and go to bed. So make sure you have some time with them and that you take time this summer to, to have some fun and to do something that makes you laugh. Kids laugh on an average 400 times a day. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Adults, 12. Hmm. If that tells you anything. So I think that, that illustrates that we need to be around children and, um, and laugh. Yeah, you know? you know, and for mothers with ADD, it could present, you know, some special challenges, whether your kids have ADD or not. And again, it's finding that balance. Sometimes it's much easier because you don't have to do all the stuff you have to do during a school year. You don't have to remember so much. But on the other hand, you don't have that structure. The kids don't go away. And it's just a lot of moving around without a lot of structure and sometimes some overstimulation. So make sure that you take some time for yourself away from the kids too uh, to you know even if it's five ten minutes at a time you have to pay attention to your inner signals of when you're getting overloaded because no one's going to laugh or have fun if you're overloaded so right. make sure you take even a break when you need to if you feel like you're getting overstimulated or unstructured right and unfortunately that might be that might mean waking up you know, 30 minutes yeah. early. Just so locking you yourself in the bathroom or <laughs> yeah. getting a babysitter's when you need to. Don't mm -hmm. put so much pressure on yourself to be the perfect mom this summer either. You know? Absolutely. Somebody S should make a bumper sticker. <laughs> Don't be the perfect mom. Okay. Um, so I think Reg is going to read me some questions uh, that we've gotten or some comments that she wants me to comment on. Right. This We had somebody um, write about being in a discussion with a friend and and he was telling this friend something and the friend said oh you must be so proud of that and he really wasn't and noted that he had really no concept of pride and whether that was from a you know the religious upbringing that he had or he wondered if it was a part of having ADD you know is there some um, 
problem with that concept mm -hmm. of feeling proud of yourself? And is pride something that can be learned, or do they have to practice it? You know, how do you? Yeah, I, I think people interpret that word pride so differently. Mm -hmm. Maybe depending on your cultural or religious upbringing, you know, can have a negative connotation. But so there's a few good points he brings up. I think many people in this culture, whether it's their religious upbringing or their particular families, were taught, oh, you, you shouldn't act like you're better than other people, or you should just, you know, care about other people more than you do about yourself. And a lot of people, just generally in the culture, ADD or not, have issues about, oh, if I feel good about what I've done, then I'm making other right. people feel good. And of course, we want you to move toward your strength and toward your talent and. The light from that can help other people and model for other people that it's important to feel good about yourself. But when you have ADD sometimes, especially before you're on medication or before you're diagnosed, before you've developed this whole view of yourself, you sometimes are not able to have those good experiences stick to you. There's like no glue there, there's no shelves there, or it's messy like inside or the good experiences are not building. And one of the goals of treatment is really slowly to build like this inner scaffold or to develop these sort of inner structures so that when you have a good experience that you feel good about, it, it'll stick and you can build upon it. So the most important thing is to start having those good experiences where you, you can feel good about. And if you, sometimes you're afraid, you know, maybe in this situation to really own that because it's too big an experience and you're so afraid that you know, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to recreate it, or you're gonna disappoint people because they're gonna expect things from you all the time. So some of this is a defense to keep away these good feelings because uh, people are so afraid that you know that that means they're an imposter and they're they want to feel good about these things, they want to own their talents and their abilities, but they're so afraid. So some of this is a defense, and so I would just start out slowly, having some successful small experiences, the way it starts to stay with you as you have other people who can sort of witness that and see you and then and that that gives you the fuel to try another step but go slowly and have somebody you know reflect back to you at first if you can't do it at yourself wow that was really you know great or I really liked what you did and to start saying that and remembering that to yourself um, so yes with ADD you can develop that feeling proud of yourself uh, gene if you feel they're missing it. Maybe that's not the right word if it's a negative word for you, but definitely you can learn to and need to learn to own all of who you are and to value who you are. Let yourself shine. Absolutely. And I have a little trick. If you, you know, it's really about starting off with the, the surrounding yourself with the right people, whether it's your spouse or, you know, your kids. And a simple example is this. I was leaving Home Depot with my four-year-old the other day, and he always asks for a gumball from the machine, and typically I will say no, and we leave. Well, this day I said yes, and later on, um, in later on in the day that evening, I said to him, "What do you love about me today?" Aww. And he said, "I love that you got me a blue gumball." You know, <laughs> and and. Was that a sense of pride? I don't know. It 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 did. It made me feel proud that I made that simple decision, and it really made my child happy. Mm -hmm. It was something small, but I think that's where you have to start. But asking someone who you know shares, and um, whether your work with you or where your life with you, and you say, "What do you love about me today?" or you know, "What do you what do you think I did well today?" Mm -hmm. And that's scary for a lot of people to ask. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, start with your dog. They always look at you so. <laughs> I go to my dog every time I really can start from there, you know, but sometimes it's scary to ask someone else, you know, mm -hmm. what they think of you. So, you know, find somebody who, you know, who really cares about you. And adores you. Yeah. Uh, we have one that, um, this is, th I find this happens a lot in the summer too, whether it's the heat or what, but, you know, we go through our lives, we're, we're educated people, we learn a lot, we observe, we're we gain wisdom over the years and um, someone was talking about the fact that you know sometimes due to the distractions um, or in I love this she called it stressy moments stressy uh, I can forget my own points of view and my really good insights and so then you know you're in a group of people and you're you're feeling like you're less than or that you don't have as many great ideas or 
things to add to the conversation when actually that's not true, but they're just not accessible at that moment. So, um, you know, how do you access that wisdom and those um, thoughts? She wanted to know from Sari, how do you keep your wisdom mm -hmm. with you all the time? Well, she's assuming that I keep my wisdom <laughs> with me all the time. And I think that's part of the problem. Sometimes when you have ADD, you have a little bit of a broken barometer, like I said before, and you think, oh, everybody else is all together all the time, and they're not having these issues, and they're just fluent, and they're, you know, brilliant all the time, and they're able to be witty, and whatever they are all the time, and, so, and you know, part of it is, you know, we don't realize everybody has a lot of issues that they're dealing with, ADD or not, and, the, you know, they have good days and bad days, and they're on and they're off, so... So first of all, yeah, uh, you have the wisdom maybe inside of you all the time, but, you, but no one, I don't think, can access all of who they are all the time. And because of that, you have to give yourself a break and realize that, oh, you know, I'm not having the greatest day. No wonder this happened, this happened, this happened, that I can understand that if I, you know, have a better day today or I take care of myself or I, you know, get rid of some of these stressors, I will be able to access you know who I am again so the wisdom is there but sometimes you're just not having a good day and you don't want to add to that all this berating yourself what's wrong with me why can't I keep all this together uh, and in general with the ADD I think the, the more anxious you are about who you're with and you know, you know should I be saying this or that the more you're gonna shut down and make your your good ideas inaccessible so again, it's like the mother in, in the busy summer. Take a break, you know, even if it's a five minute break, two minute break, excuse yourself from the room, you know, do some deep breathing or just bring yourself down to a calm place. Uh, and some of those thoughts will come back to you uh, and rushing back to you. It's when you're just frozen with fear, you know, added to the ADD that things become completely tied up. And you know, some of it too, it just plain old physiology. I mean, when you're stressed out or you're nervous in a situation, your blood and the oxygen in your body are going to places like your heart, um, you know, it, your lungs. I, you've got it going away to other pl away from your head. Right. So I'm going to tell you a really quick exercise. Like if you went to the bathroom and excused yourself, you pump up on your toes. So if you're standing, you, you push your heels off the floor and you just pump up and down like that for 20, 40 times, hmm. something like that. And it's supposed to shoot that blood right back up to your head. And, and you may, it literally may pump those thoughts right back into your head. So there's my little trick. That's good. The, and it also goes day. back to, um, I'm going to try that, but it also goes back to what this other men was talking about. You know, how if we're, if we're, uh, able to access and remember who we are and what we feel good about and what we can do well, we're less able to compare ourselves all the time. To, oh, look, they read that book. I didn't read that. Or should I hide how, you know, what I really feel or who I really am? So the more you're comparing yourself negatively to these other people in the room that you think have it all together, you know, the less likely you are to be able to be yourself and say who you are. So, you know, it all goes back to remembering who you are, too, mm -hmm. and relaxing into that. And then stopping that, you know, the real toxic comparisons. Right, and honestly, everybody does that. Um, finally, we have um, someone who wrote this wonderful um, comment about getting dazzled by a situation. Just read that because it's such nice language. This person yes. actually is not from, is, English is not her native language. So sometimes I think you come up with these wonderful accidents of expression that I think are, are worth just reading. Right. So she said, once I got dazzled by a situation and I told my friend I had to think about it. One minute later I said, okay, it's fine by me. And she said, gosh, you're weird. So I tried to take the time to undazzle. And if that's weird, then so be it. Yeah, that's beautiful, you know, for so many reasons, and I was uh, telling Reg when we looked at this beforehand that her language choice was different because in our country we would say, I got frazzled by a situation, you know, and that just starts that loop of negativity, and her use of the word dazzle uh, puts a sparkle to it, and I think it sort of can convey... You know, that on the other side of frazzle can be these brilliant thoughts, you know. So if you take the time to unfrazzle, you know, maybe you can start to dazzle. And uh, taking the time, you know, exactly what we've been talking about, taking that time to step away and think about it, that, that means you're at a really, you know, you've worked at this for a while to be able to say and to risk saying, you know what, I, I'm going to take some, a few minutes to think about this and do what we just said to, to access those 
thoughts and to risk that someone's the worst thing that we're all afraid of is that someone's going to say, oh, gee, you're weird. And where she's gotten to is, is the place that... That's okay. That's the place to get to. If, if you think I'm weird, that's fine. You know, I think I was reading about Ab Abraham Maslow this week. One of the great lines his psychologist said was, uh, you know, that, that the ultimate level you want to get to is when you're not a slave to the good opinions of other people. And, um, you know, that's what we're all working toward. And it's not easy, especially when you have ADD and you've been subject to some of these wounds. So just in this little phrase that she wrote, I think she said a lot of important things. I agree. I think that's a great way to end it too. Um, dazzle yourself. Dazzle inside. yourself this summer. Whenever you start to feel frazzled, turn it on its head and start to dazzle yourself. Um, and take that time to move away if it's uh, stopping you from accessing your thoughts. And remember who you are and uh, your unique contribution that you could make it might be different than everybody else um, and let people see who you really are absolutely here's to a brilliant summer all right have a great summer Cheers. see you later bye